All right, welcome to part two of our lecture from Friday, March 3rd. We just looked at how to draw loose dot structures for covalent compounds that contain double or triple bonds. And now we're going to talk about the notion of a resonance structure. So let's get into this, a resonance structure. So I'm going to start by making a statement, which is sometimes... We can draw more than one stable Lewis dot structures for a molecular compound. And remember, when we say stable, we're saying that octets and duets are met on all atoms. So if we can create a couple of different loose dot structures that give us all of our electrons being spent and all our octets being complete, then we have created a set of resonance structures. So let's do an example. Let's go ahead and look at, uh, I don't know, what do we want to look at today? How about we do something like the carbonate polyatomic ion? Maybe do I want to do something a little simpler first? Maybe. Okay, let's do carbonate. Let's go with our gut here. So let's draw the stable Lewis dot structure for the carbonate polyatomic ion. All right. So this might throw you off at first looking at the carbonate polyatomic ion because you know that when we're doing Lewis dot structures using this set of rules here, we're talking about covalent compounds and you might see this charge and say, well, wait, that's an ion. How is the, how is that making these rules like applicable here? How does that work? And you are right that this is an ion, but the reason why this little molecule, this polyatomic ion has an ionic charge is because it has an excess of electrons after the carbon and three oxygens have been covalently bonded to one another. So we've got a covalent bonding scheme between our carbon and oxygens. It's just that covalent bonding results in an excess of minus two charge. So we're actually going to account for this when we do our valence electron count. So let's start. Let's do our total number of valence electrons. Okay, so carbon, We know that carbon is in the fourth group on the periodic table, one, two, three, four. So it has four valence electrons, a single oxygen atom. Oxygen is found on the one, two, three, four, five, six group on the periodic table. And in this polyatomic ion, I have three oxygen atoms. So I'm gonna multiply this all by three. So six times three is 18 electrons. And then I have to remember what it means to be an ion in general. So remember, things carry ionic charge, 
meaning they could be positively charged or negatively charged, due to either having a deficit of electrons, if we're a cation, or an excess of electrons, if we're an anion. So if we are looking at carbon with three oxygens that when bonded together results in an overall excess charge of negative two, then that excess charge has to come from the fact that we have two extra electrons contributing those charges. So anytime you're looking at a polyatomic ion, you have to account for the charge by either adding in electrons if it's an anion or removing electrons if it's a cation. All right, from this we can get our budget. So that's the four electrons plus 18 plus two. That is 24 electrons that I have to make my Lewis dot structures. So let's move on to step two, which is place your elements symmetrically around the central element, which is typically the thing that's written first. Almost often it is carbon. So I'm gonna do carbon, oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. That has nice symmetry to me. And now that I've got those placed around my central atom, I'm going to connect each of my outer atoms to carbon with a single bond. So one, two, three, I'm going to three single bonds. Now in making these three single bonds, I have used up two, four, six electrons, because remember a single covalent bond is a shared electron pair or a bonding pair. So I have used up six of my electrons from my bonding budget, giving me 18 electrons left. And what I do with these remaining 18 electrons next is I place them around my outermost atoms such that their octets are fulfilled, starting with the most electronegative atom. Now, all of my terminal atoms here in carbonate are oxygen. They all have equivalent electronegativities. So it doesn't matter which of these I decide to fill first. So let's go ahead and fill them, remembering that each of these oxygens already has two valence electrons due to the formation of this bonding pair with carbon. So I need to add six electrons on each oxygen. So I'm gonna count up one, two, three, four, five, six. So that was six electrons to fill oxygen one. This leaves me with 12 left. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have fulfilled the octet on this bottom right oxygen, leaving me with six electrons left to fulfill the octet on this bottom left oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I have spent all of my electron budget. I have no more electrons left, so I cannot move on to the next step, which would say if there's any remaining electrons, place them on the central atom because I have a run out of all my electrons. So since I have run out of electrons, let's go ahead and confirm that octets are met. And if octets are not, then we're going to need to convert some of these bonding pairs in, sorry, non-bonding pairs or lone pairs on the oxygens into bonding pairs to carbon. So each of the oxygens has two valence electrons from the covalent bond, four, six, eight, that we added. So we know that all these octets are full. That is literally what we just intentionally did was fill the octets on our outermost atoms. And if we look at carbon now, Carbon has these three single bonds formed to it. So that is two, four, six valence electrons. This does not meet octet. So this is not stable. This is not the most stable Lewis dot structure that I could draw for the carboning ion. So I have some options here. I've run out of electrons to spend. So I can't just like add electrons as I want. 
in order to make carbon meet its octet. So what I have to do instead is recycle or convert a lone pair or non-bonding pair on one of my elements into a bonding pair to carbon. So I don't know, let's pick this top oxygen here. So let's say we've got this lone pair that gets converted into a bonding pair to carbon. So this will leave me with carbon singly bound to the bottom oxygens and these guys on the bottom have their octets filled three lone pairs and one bonding pair and now carbon is bound differently to this top oxygen because one of those non-bonding electron pairs or lone pairs has been converted into a bonding pair, creating now a double bond, leaving behind only two lone pairs on that top oxygen. So let's see if that fixed our octet issue on the carbon. So remember, since we only converted an electron pair from non-bonding to bonding, on this oxygen atom, it should still have octet. But let's count for ease of mind, two, four, six, eight. This oxygen meets octet. Two, four, six, eight. This oxygen meets octet. Two, four, six, eight. This oxygen meets octet. And now let's look at our carbon atom. So remember each of these lines represents a bonding pair or shared two electrons between our elements. So two, four from our single bonds, and then four more in the double bond. So six, eight, that is eight valence electrons. This does indeed meet octet. And the convention when writing the Lewis dot structure for a polyatomic ion, like the carbonate ion, is once you've got your structure, you'll go ahead and wrap it up in a little bracket blanket and then raise it to its charge. This is just to be super clear to whoever's looking at this structure that yes, this thing has an overall minus two charge in and of itself. When these things covalently bond together, they result in an excess of minus two charge. Now let's kind of go back here to the process where we converted our lone pair into a bonding pair. I rather randomly just decided that it would be the top oxygen that would do this, right? There's no rule that said it had to be the top. It was just something that I kind of selected. So let's call this option version one, where the top oxygen is the one that contributes its lone pair into a bonding pair. Let's maybe look at a different version. How about the version where it's the bottom left oxygen that contributes. So V2, version two. Don't want that to look too much like our dilution equation. So here we go. All right, what would this look like? So you will notice that when you do this, it will be a very, very similar structure to the initial one that we've drawn, except instead of having the double bond to the oxygen up top, we will now have a double bond to the oxygen in the bottom left. So I could draw something like C, now with a double bond to the bottom left oxygen, which would leave behind two lone pairs. And then my single bonds to each of my other oxygens with those singly bound oxygens containing six lone pairs. So two, four, six, eight, this achieves octet. Two, four, six, eight, this achieves octet. Two, four, six, eight, this bottom left oxygen achieves octet. Again, all we did was convert a non-bonding electron pair into a bonding electron pair. And carbon, now that it has a double bond and two single bonds, contains two, four, six, eight bonding pairs to it, so that meets octet. 
So this is also a perfectly valid Lewis dot structure. So I could wrap this up in a bracket blanket, throw it in its negative two charge to indicate that we know this is the carbonate ion, and that is totally fine too. Now again, who said it had to be the bottom left? What if we made it so that it was the bottom right oxygen that contributed its lone pair into a bonding pair or converted its lone pair into a bonding pair? So you'll notice that the Lewis dot structure will look very similar to the previous versions, except it is now the oxygen in the bottom right that has the double bond to carbon where our top and left oxygen atoms contain six lone electrons or three lone pairs each, and the bottom right oxygen, two lone pairs, doubly bound to carbon. And even though we can see that it should meet octet based on it looking just like our other versions, we can go ahead and count just for sanity's sake. So two, four, six, eight, that top oxygen meets octet, two, four, six, eight. This bottom left oxygen meets octet. Two, four, six, eight. This bottom right oxygen meets octet. And then carbon, two, four, six, eight. That also meets octet. So this is another perfectly valid Lewis dot structure that I could draw for this ion. So then what do I do? How do I know which one to choose? So I'm going to switch up my color coding for a little bit. I'm going to change this from purple to blue. So V2 is now shown in blue. We'll poet just for you. Okay, let's go back to the definition of a resonance structure. If we have more than one stable Lewis dot structure, then we call those resonance structures. Since we were able to draw for the carbonate ion three different structures that each all met the octet requirements that we needed on each of our four atoms, then these are all equally valid versions of Lewis dot structures to draw. In fact, they're all equally valid such that we call them resonance structures. And we indicate resonance structures by putting resonance structures in brackets, which notice we've already done here because we were looking at an ion anyway. And then we use this double headed arrow to show that we have kind of all three options available to us when it comes to representing our Lewis structure for our compound. So all three versions, these are resonance structures of one another. Okay, so in our next video, we are going to talk about cases where we have multiple different resonance structures, but they're not kind of all twins like we saw here with carbonate. Right, notice this resonance structure looks just like this resonance structure rotated in 3D, looks just like this resonance structure rotated in 3D. But that's not always going to be the case. So anytime you have to prove which of your resonance structures is the one that's most likely to form or the most stable of them all, we're going to have to utilize what's known as formal charge. So that is what we're going to talk about in video three for our lecture on Friday, March 3rd.